As I said, many people see the um, ones that attributes, intelligence and the rest, as being like a cake which you can slice into a piece called nature and a piece called nurture. You can't do that, you'd have to unbake the cake, or alternatively, you could digest the cake, all right? And that's what digestion basically does. It gets back the carbohydrates and the proteins and the, and the amino acids which are in the cake, okay? And here's a young lady about to do the experiment, all right? She's about to experiment on this important genetic phenomenon. Uh, if you do the experiment too frequently, what happens? You, <laughs> you get fat, all right? And I think many of us are aware of this in general terms, but we are now in the middle of an epidemic of, bad, of ill health, which is as important as some of the epidemics that spread through the world in the 19th, the 18th, the 17th centuries. Not the Black Death, but it's a very, very important epidemic, and that is the obesity epidemic, okay? And I want to explore that from the point of view of nature and nurture. And I'll show you some slides showing the proportion of American adults who are morbidly obese. Now, this is 30 pounds overweight for a person who's short, even shorter than me, five foot four, okay? So that's a lot of extra weight to be carrying for a five foot four person. And here we've got the figures from 1985, and uh, lots of states in 1985 we didn't have the records for, uh, but many we did. And I'll go through the years, and you'll see, as the, as, the, as the colors get warmer, you'll see what happened in this epidemic. So we start in 1985, where the states we've got records for, the majority of have got fewer than one person in 10 who are morbidly obese, and some have got um, between 10 and 14%. 1990... Suddenly, all of a sudden, a majority of states have got uh, um, uh, people who are obese, about one, by, uh, about one in eight or more, 10 to 14%. 1995, a um, uh, majority of states just about, one in six, uh, more than one in six obese. 2000, we're getting to a situation where plenty of states have got, are moving towards one in five. 2005, some states have got more than one in four. And by 2010, some states are, are, are turning towards one in three. Okay. Now, that's a major, major problem. Uh, we'll see in a moment that that actually causes uh, um, uh, lots and lots and lots of health um, issues. Um, and it's not a local problem. It's a very recent problem. That's what people find shocking. In 1980, it didn't exist. And when I lived in the States in the 70s, it scarcely existed. Now it's everywhere. So that's only about 40 years or so um, it's taken to shift the weight of the Americans. Every American puts on a pound a year since 1970. My God. Okay. Um, so there we, that, that's what the figures are. And it's not, it's not restricted to the United States. States because since 1985 a great tsunami of lard has washed across the Atlantic and, and broken upon European shores. Now we in Britain have many things to be proud of and one of the things we should be proudest of is that we are in fact the fattest country in Europe. <laughs> Here we have the thinnest which is Romania, okay, so about one in, this is a slightly less uh, punitive measure of obesity um, um, and that's understandable but Switzerland is the second thinnest Right down the bottom here, rural Britannia, um, one in four of us is obese on this not quite so stringent measure. And that's well above the average, which is the EU, uh, about, one, about, about 15%. Um, and if you draw a rather more detailed map of British obesity, you end up with this, the fat map of the British Isles. And it's actually quite remarkable because, as you can see, that the obes obesity is concentrated in the poorest parts of Britain, in South Wales, where I come from, in, uh, in Tyneside, in Manchester and Liverpool. Um, you'll see that in the Tory voting svelte shires around London, you can see that Kent is fat. It doesn't vote, you know, that's, that's, the, that's, that's why they vote UKIP. Um, um, <laughs> you'll see there is very little obesity. So we we'll actually live in extraordinary times. We live in a time where for the first time in history, the poor are fat and the rich are thin. 